What's up fam, I'm Ryan Milton from Team Flex. You're on my show, I do every Tuesday for ya. This is called the Iron Palace. On the Iron Palace, we talk about training. They say the body's a temple, but when you got gains, it's all palace, everybody. So I'm gonna cover all kinds of things about training on the show, it's what we do every week. Today I wanna talk about the most important training variable that you probably are not paying attention to. And a lot of you out there can be knocking your head trying to figure this out, well just let me tell you in just a minute. But first, do me a favor, subscribe to this channel and then share out the video, this is just one of five Five awesome shows I run all week for you right here on Team Flex TV. This is the Iron Palace, and I'm Ryan Milton. Let's kick it off. All right, fam, so when we come to talking about the most important training variable, a lot of you might think it could be, you know, drop sets or supersets or tempos or exercise selection, compounds, isolations, you know, isometric holds. There's so many different things, right, that you might think, what is Ryan about to say right now? What is Coach Ryan about to say? And actually, I'm going to tell you straight up, it's not going to be one of these things you guys, you're thinking about right out the gate because everybody always thinks about the most important training variable actually being what you're doing in a gym. However, the actual most important training variable, guess what, say it with me, it's recovery. Recovery is everything for trying to do anything in the gym, okay? Doesn't matter if you wanna burn fat, you wanna build muscle, you wanna get stronger, you're trying to develop, whatever you're trying to do in the gym, I guarantee you that this does not change. The recovery variable is the only variable that is gonna be be able to push you to new levels and new heights, okay? I don't care how many of you out there think that you can train, you know, your biceps every day or girls that want to train their glutes every day and think that they're going to actually make any type of progress or gains. You're not because guess what? You have nixed out the main variable, recovery, and this is everything. And, you know, people just simply don't look at recovery in the right light at all. So today I'm going to specifically cover my top five recovery tips for you guys to make sure Sure that you are getting your absolute best when it comes to training and results overall. Recovery tip number one, this should be a given, it's the most simple, it's the most straightforward. Get enough sleep, fam. This is huge. And I have to tell this to so many different clients of mine, it's insane. You know, they're doing the training right, they're doing the nutrition right, they're doing all these things right, but they want to go faster, they want to progress faster, or maybe they're stalling off, not getting as fast as they want to go. And I'm saying, okay, well, what's going on with your sleep? Oh, I sleep three, four, five hours a night. What? What? You're sleeping three, four, five hours a night? And you're, you're wondering why we're not moving as fast as you want? You, want, you wonder why you're not burning as much fat? You're not building as much muscle? You're not getting as strong as you want to be? It's because you're not recovering, fam. This is so basic and it's so, you know, honestly, when you want to grow, you got to sleep. It's kind of like that old saying, eat like a horse, grow like a weed, you know, sleep like a baby, grow like a weed, you know, all those things. It comes into play in the fact that you got to be getting enough sleep, okay? Okay, I'm often recommending for people eight, nine, ten hours. If you can get ten hours of sleep, then you know you might not have a very hectic lifestyle, but you're gonna have really good gains, and that's what you gotta look at. So ways to get better sleep, right? Even if you don't have the time to get the eight in, whatever, make the most of six, make the most of seven. Make sure you have the standards of you know the right environment, a cool temperature, for example. This is huge. Most people sleep too hot. They sleep in a room that's too hot or whatever, and it. You know, it nixes your melatonin, it stops your HGH production, stops a lot of things from happening. Your growth hormone, you know, all this stuff is going to be influenced by just even the heat. How crazy is that? So, you can actually make your sleep more beneficial by sleeping in a room that is at a proper temperature. Usually, about 68, 69, 70 degrees is a good spot to start. Make sure you have no artificial lights in your room. Black it out, get blackout curtains. This is a must, you know. Dumb down your screen time before bed. Half hour, get off the phones. Half hour, get off the TVs chill in a normal environment you know with dimmed lights even and let yourself wind down and get better sleep the sleep variable is probably the most important and it's probably the most neglected and people think they can just you know get away with not sleeping but at the end of the day this is where you recover ladies and gents when you are sleeping your body's doing all these processes it's going through all these different recovery variables you will get better gains if you get better sleep
My top tip number two kind of goes along with the first. Get naps in, all right? I know this is crazy to think about. You're, is Coach Wright really telling us to take a nap right now? Yes, I am. Some period of time in my life when I had the absolute best gains possible, I was not able to get, you know, like eight, eight hours of sleep at night. I was up early working. I was working a lot. I was doing a lot of split shifts as a trainer at the gym. I was, you know, trying to build my own business on side, and then I was training. So I had a lot going on. Like a lot of you out there, watching this video, I know you're like, all right, out the gate, I'm screwed, I can't get eight hours of sleep. No, you can, you can still get in naps, okay? And naps can be very short, a lot of people nap wrong. A lot of people nap and they say, oh, I need an hour because that takes me, no, you don't need an hour. What you need is 12, 15, 20 minutes. A short nap, if you time it right and you can fall right asleep, it takes a little getting used to, but eventually you will be able to do it and you're gonna be recharged, you're gonna feel supercharged in just a few minutes, okay? And that's gonna actually Actually very much help you catch up on that sleep help you recover better it's great to try to do a nap post gym if you can find the time all right so if you go to the gym you train you get home you take a little nap you eat you go about your day it's a great way to sneak in some extra rest a little bit of extra recovery and even if you can't fit a large chunk of time to sleep at night you can oftentimes find 15 20 minutes somewhere in the day to sneak a nap in, and that will make all the difference in the world so if you're trying to recover better you're trying to get better gains, figure out how you can take some more naps. Tip number three, and another kind of obvious one to me, but not to most of you out there, make sure you're following a proper training split. People do the craziest shit, I tell you. When they say they want to get bigger, they want to build muscle, they want to get stronger, they want to you know, develop this, that, burn more fat, they end up overtraining. And there's no simple way to put it. There's, you know, I've said before, there's not really overtraining, but there is under-recovering, and people are doing that on a massive scale. Like I said earlier in this video, guys go to the gym and they're like, oh, I want to build my shoulders more, so they do shoulders every single day of the week. And you know, girls, they're always trying to do glutes every single day of the week. And here's the truth, if you're doing these things, you have automatically, even if you're getting good sleep, by the way, you've automatically put your body into a spot where it's in constant catabolic breakdown of these muscles. It's constantly beating them up, tearing them down. It's not gonna have time to rebuild if you don't allow for it, right? When we look at the science, you know, it says up to even 48 hours is what it can take for a muscle group to actually recover if it is properly trained. And let's not forget what we're doing in the gym. In the gym, we are breaking muscles muscle fibers down. We are training, we're lifting, we're doing sets, we're doing reps to break muscle fibers down to then elicit a growth response, which then adds new muscle, builds those fibers back, makes you stronger, gets you those results you want to see, ladies and gents. If you nix out this variable because you think you're going to do it faster by training more and more frequently, you're doing it wrong. You're actually holding yourself back and over a span of time, if you keep doing that type of training, you know, you look at yourself six months, a year down the road, you actually look far worse than even when you started it. So you're putting in more work with less result and honestly kind of going backwards when you end up in this mode where you're overtraining, under recovering, doing too much, okay? What you need to be doing is following a training split that hits the body hard and then lets you recover. You hit another muscle group, lets you recover. Hit another muscle group, lets you recover. Don't hit anything again until it's already recovered. It's kind of basic, you know, science in my mind. It's stuff I know but a lot of people overdo it. They think they can do it faster. They think they can do it better. What you gotta do is follow the right program and really push it to the limits. By the way, anyone that wants help, go to my website, teamffelex.com. Subscribe to our free trial and I will show you a training split for your goals that will fit you getting the best recovery result. Teamffelex.com, free coaching trial now. Number four, in other words, number four that you gotta be hitting is having the right nutrition. 
Coincidentally, you wouldn't even consider, most people wouldn't consider this, right? A lot of people look at recovering, they say, okay, it's about, you know, whatever. It's about taking an Epsom salt bath and shit. No, it's not. It's about getting the nutrition that actually feeds the recovery in your body. And this comes down to eating the right macros, the right amount of calories for your goals. A lot of people that are dieting, they don't recover that well because guess what? They're in a caloric deficit, lower on nutrients, getting less calories, burning body fat, right? It is a tougher spot to recover. And that's why a lot of, you know, competitors, they go on prep and they wonder why they're always so tired. You're in a calorie deficit. You're doing all this activity in a calorie deficit. People that, you know, go on a diet, they're overweight. They wonder why they're always so tired. You're in a calorie deficit. You know, your nutrients are down. You're not getting as many foods. You're not eating as many calories. It does take a toll on recovery and that's what you feel. And so, yeah, you got to prioritize some of those first three things we talked about a little bit better when you're dieting. But overall, you want to make sure no matter what, whether you're dieting, you're at maintenance, you're going into a surplus, you're eating the right macronutrients that are going to support your recovery. And obviously nutrition, all that, it's different for everybody. But when we're talking about macros, you got to fit into these areas, right? You want to hit your proteins, your carbs, your fats, and your fibers for your goals. And then you really need to look at, honestly, on the larger scale, your micronutrients, your minerals, your vitamins, your antioxidants. Make sure you're getting all these things that are going to support good recovery in your body. It's amazing the amount of times that, you know, I'll see people that are struggling, they're beating themselves up. They're trying to get a result, and I'm looking at what they're doing, and they're eating like hamster diet calories. You know, somebody who's messaged me looking for a coach, whatever, asking me stuff. I always ask them what they're doing, and uh, they'll tell me, "Oh yeah, I'm eating 600 calories a day, and I'm just not feeling good. My body hurts. I'm aching. I'm tired." And I'm like, "Are you serious?" And actually feeding them more actually gets them in the results, right? We do a reverse diet. We start feeding them. I get the right macros in. I get the right micros in. I get the right nutrients to their body. They start actually getting better results, eating more food. So you got to make sure that you support the t right type of diet, the right type of nutrition to actually elicit a good recovery response in your body. Your body will simply not be able to recover even if you do these first three variables if you don't have the right nutrition. So make sure you're optimizing your nutrition as much as you possibly can and remember that has to be custom for you. My number five tip for ultimate recovery, you gotta look at constant adaptation. And what I mean by this is you have to see how your body is responding to what you're doing and make adjustments. This is such a big issue in the fitness industry, in the coaching industry. It's been forever, right? People get a meal plan. They get a workout plan. They follow that over and 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 eventually it stops doing good or it's been doing harm or it starts doing harm. You know, it leads to a point where it's just not working anymore, right? And people keep banging on it. They keep doing it. They keep doing these things. They're not getting the results, but they don't understand why. It's because you're not adapting. Here's what I always say to people, right? Adaptation is everything. It really is. This is why when you're coaching, you know, I'm doing coaching or any of my coaches doing coaching on Team Flex, I make them do these check-ins with our clients. We do check-ins every week where we're looking at your stats. We're looking at your pictures. We're checking your weights out you tracked in our app. We're checking your sets and reps. I'm hearing your feedback from you. How you feeling? You tired? You feel good? All these things. All this is so important. You got to listen to your body, ladies and gentlemen. As crazy as that is to say, it's so big basic, but it's so forgotten. It's like people just look at the, you know, the, the PDFs now and they're like, okay, 10 sets of squats, 10 sets, you know, they're not looking at the fact, okay, how do you feel today? How's your body actually doing? You got to respond with your body, okay? And that is key. You got to be able to adapt. And you also got to know when to change things on your program. When is it time to maybe raise your calories, lower your calories? When is it time to do less sets, less reps? When do you need an actual full break week? This is something that you got to have in there in the first place, you know? You got to know when these variables come into play, when to listen to your body, and how that's going to push you forward. And that's why having a coach can honestly be so damn important.
said I was only gonna do five, but I gotta have one more. Number six, recovery variable, I'm throwing it in, is you really do need to understand when you should take a full week's rest. This is something that goes beyond, beyond the scope of every client, every athlete, every person. I know, trust me, I used to be this guy. In the gym, you know, I just wanted to go all the time. I wanted to go every day. I love to go to the gym. I want to go more. I want to do this. I want to do that. I didn't want to take a break week ever. And you know, after training thousands and thousands of clients over the years, I know it's very hard to convince people that a break week is beneficial. I usually have to wait, honestly, until they're feeling so run down, so tired, that they are willing to take one, which is obviously not the ideal. The ideal way would be to actually just plan it in and program it in. But you also got to know when to push the body and when to pull back. You have to know these things. You have to be able to look at it and see how you're feeling, see how the trend's going. I can almost tell you guys, every single client that I have that I put on a break week, which I do this with everybody, I will make them do break weeks. I'll make them take a week off. I almost could tell you when it's going to happen based on how check-ins are going, right? So this kind of ropes with the last one a bit, but based on how my check-ins go, when I hear my clients talking to me and they're saying, hey, you know what? I'm feeling a little tired. I'm feeling this and that. My weights are going down. My check-ins aren't looking as good. I almost know we're coming up on a break week at some point and I'm going to program it in. I'm going to tell them in. I'm going to see. Sometimes they'll say, send me one message and I'll be like, all right, it's time to take a rest. It's time to take a rest. When your motivation is down, when you're feeling fatigued, when the weights aren't going up as easy, you know, maybe your check-ins aren't looking as good. You're not seeing any progress take a week off. And that's crazy to say, and I know most of you are like, no way, Ryan, I'm not doing it, man. But it will take your recovery to the next level. You will take a full week rest. You won't go to the gym at all. You still eat good. You still do your macros, your micros. You do all that. You can still be active. Go take a walk. Experience nature. Get your face in the damn sun occasionally, okay? And what happens is, is then you recover. Then you feel good. By the end of the week, I guarantee you, you're itching to get back to the gym. You're excited to get back to working out, and you bring a whole new intensity and a lot of times, pretty much every time, honestly, that I've seen in my career, you're gonna kick yourself into some new results. You're gonna get stronger, you're gonna look better, you're gonna feel better, you're gonna push harder, you're gonna do a lot of things. And you really, realistically should look at having a break week somewhere within every 12 to 16, 20 weeks. You should take some time off, a couple days off, break week off. And I say it now, none of you will do it, but eventually you will notice the signs that I just mentioned earlier, and that could be a good time to consider it, all right? Another great reason to get yourself a coach and actually have a coach is because you will be able to have somebody like me be like, hey, guess what? We're taking the fucking week off. And that transforms you guys. It takes you to the next level with your results. So there you go, guys. It started as top five, turned into top six. I hope you got something out of this. The biggest variable that will up your training, get your results faster, is making sure you optimize your recovery. If you pick two or three things out of this video today to start with, I guarantee you, you're going to have better results next week, next month, in six months months, whatever. You do all these things, all six, you're going to be, you know, taking shortcuts that would have taken you years otherwise. If you got friends and people, you know, training for the same goal, you'll be there in a few months, they're going to take another three years. And that's because nobody brings this stuff in. But trust me, this is key. This is critical. People wonder how we get such crazy results on Team Flex, how we get these crazy transformations. They're like, no way that that only took a few months. It should have taken years. It's because I optimize all these things. My coaches, we optimize everything in to make sure you're getting the best training the best nutrition, the best recovery, the best adaptation, all this Get your results so much faster, so much further, and that's what you can all do too if you start to prioritize your recovery. If you need help with your training, you want to understand more about this, you want to make sure you're set up on a split that's going to work for you, strongly suggest you do my free coaching trial. TeamFFLEX.com right now. You can go there. You get a free coaching trial with us. Put your email in the box. It's going to invite you into our coaching app. This is the same app we use to coach all of our clients everywhere around the world. You get to experience it absolutely free. There is no obligation to sign up. You're not going to put a credit card in. You're not doing anything. It's a free coaching trial because I want to help you get better. You're going to work with me, one of my coaches, totally free. The next seven days will help you make sure you got everything you need to be doing down so you can get the best results in the fastest manner. And you can get all that right now at teamffelex.com. Just put your email in that box, all right? Hope to see you on the other side. I seriously do. Thank you all so much for watching my channel. I'm Ryan Milton from Team Flex. You are on the Iron Pals tomorrow. I'll be back for first callouts, my show dedicated towards all you competitors out there. We got some cool stuff tomorrow, so make sure you subscribe and you share. I'm Ryan Milton from Team Flex. You are on. First call out.